In this video, we're going to see two illustrative examples of what happens when you don't use mixed models when you should. If you don't know what mixed models are, I made a video about it on my channel, and I will link it to this video. But let's recap what are the main differences between mixed and regular models. What I mean by regular models is either linear regression, where the mean of a distribution is dependent on some predictors, or generalized linear models, where some function of the mean is dependent on some predictors. In linear model, the distribution of y is continuous and usually assumed to be normal. In GLMs, it can be any distribution from a family of distributions. For example, Bernoulli, Poisson, Gamma, etc. But the main difference for us is the model. Because as we can see, mixed models assume this extra term depicted here by these u's. In addition to the predictors we care about, there are also random effects that are stemming from the group unit from which the observations come from. Mixed models are used in longitudinal or hierarchical data. Longitudinal means that we take repeated measures of something over time, for example, blood pressure. Hierarchical means that we measure something that comes from some hierarchy. For example, we measure finals, test scores, and we expect schools to have some effect on it. Students are naturally grouped into schools, and we expect that better schools have generally better scores than worse off schools. But what happens if we ignore the grouping and run regular models? Let's see in the next two examples. Both examples were actually coded by me and you can find the code in the accompanying notebook on the course website. Example one, suppose you have the following data set of 40 observations, two columns, X is sex and Y is score. You want to check if sex has any effect on score and decide to run a linear regression, which is equivalent to a t-test in this scenario. The coefficient comes out with a p-value of 0.027, less than 0.05, and so apparently significant. You are about to conclude that sex does have a significant effect. But wait, then you notice this extra column, which you previously ignored, ID. And upon investigation, you find out that the scores are repeated measures of only four different people. So even though n is equal to 40, in reality, we only have four people. Can you really conclude anything from just four people? Well, maybe, but the model you used is inappropriate. So you now run a mixed model, and you add a random intercept per person. This time, the coefficient comes out with a larger standard error and the p-value is insignificant. So it turns out that when taking personal variation, sex doesn't come out significant. Lucky we caught that on time. A few things to note here. First, this example could also be adjusted to generalized models, that is GLM versus GLMM. Second, this is something that could happen, but it doesn't have to happen. Here, the way I coded it was that sex doesn't affect the score, but the random effects, which I controlled, just happened to be aligned with sex. And I'm talking ironically, of course. But it doesn't have to happen. And it could have been that the regular model would have said the effect is insignificant too. And third, if sex did have a significant effect, it could be that the mixed model would also come out significant. Let's move to the second example. You have the following data set. 40 observations, X is use of some drug, and Y is some score. You run a linear regression to check if drug has any effect on score, and it comes out with an insignificant p-value. You are about to conclude that the drug has no effect, but again you notice the ID column. And upon investigation, it turns out that these are repeated measures of four different people. Each one had 10 experiments, five measured without the drug and five with the drug. When you run a mixed model with a random intercept, the coefficient comes out very significant. So when taking the personal variation, the drug does come out to have a significant effect on the score. Here you can see the plot of the scores on the x-axis and the drug on the y-axis. When looked all together, it doesn't seem the drug has any effect. But when we color the points according to each individual, we see that the effect of the drug becomes more visible and we see that the general trend of the drug is to raise the score. So in conclusion, not using mixed models when it's appropriate can either falsely indicate significance of an effect, as we saw in example one, where the linear model misled us to believe the effect is significant when in fact it wasn't, or mask significant effects, as we saw in example two, where the linear model misled us to believe that an effect is insignificant when in fact it was significant. Also, if you go back and check, the coefficient estimates are exactly the same for both models, but the standard errors are incorrect. 
In the first example, they are underestimated, and in the second example, they are inflated. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.